I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me in all my days. I will daily your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head. I will sing. Of the mildness of God. Oh, listen, listen, next verse. I love your love. I love your voice. Oh, you have led, led me through the fire. And the darkness night. night. You stay close. You, you are close like no other. I love you as a father. I love you as a father. I've known you as a friend. I know you as a friend. Oh, and I have been in the goodness of God. told you I am from rivers of joy. So I exhibit joy. Hallelujah! Yeah. Well, all the frowning faces this morning will turn to joy before I live in Jesus' name. Yeah. You will smile again. Yeah. You will laugh again. Yeah. Come on, give your hand to Jesus and be seated down. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. I use the five minutes you reserved. So <laughs> my time starts now. <laughs> I mean, it's my friend. I mean, praise God. Good to see you looking all good and beautiful and holy anointed faces. Glory to God. I know my brother is being used mightily here. And my sister is not here today. Uh, like he said, we come a long way. And I bring Jesus joy from Rivers of Joy in London. And I hope that before we finish today, things will change. Amen. Yeah. I'm here to discuss the M word. Marriage, it strikes fear in some people. It strikes anxiety. It strikes all kinds of emotion. But today, those emotions, the questions will be answered in Jesus' name. Yeah. And the man is so weak. Yeah. 
probably know now that I'm a noisemaker, okay? As your father God. Say, shout. <laughs> I'm going to be addressing three groups of people today. The young ones who are not yet married and who each time that phrase or word comes up, something jumps in them. They are scared. They avoid their parents. They avoid their friends. Today is your day. There's some other group of people who are already married, married for 27 years like myself, almost 30 years like Deepo, and some 40 years, who are saying, well, I don't need this. No, guess what? You're going to learn new things that will refresh, reverberate your marriage again in Jesus' name. Because some of us married in ignorance, and because we married in, in ignorance, the benefits, the joys, the things that come with marriage, we have been deprived of them. But today, the new wine will flow again yeah. in Jesus' name. And the third group of people are people who have given up altogether. Maybe they are divorced or they have gone through a, a traumatic relationship and they vow never to marry again. You are going to marry again. Yeah, joy is coming back. Let's turn our Bible to the book of Matthew. Are they giving it to me or something? Somebody reading it? Okay, Matthew chapter 19, verse 1. It came to pass that when Jesus had finished these sayings, he departed from Galilee and came into the coast of Judea beyond Jordan. And great multitudes followed him and he healed them there. The Pharisees also came unto him tempting him and saying unto him, is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every curse? And he answered and said unto them, verily, verily, I say unto you. I mean, <laughs> have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female, and said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twine shall be one flesh. Wherefore, there are no more twine, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder. And he said unto them, Why did Moses, and they said unto him, Why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement, and to put her away. And he said unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning, somebody say from the beginning, it was not so. So I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committed adultery, and whoso married her, which is put away, don't commit adultery. His disciples say unto him, if this is the case of a man, <laughs> if this is the case of a man, it is not good to marry. But he said unto them, all men cannot receive this saying, save they to whom is pertinence. Amen. Now, Jesus Christ always had encounters with this group of people called the Pharisees. The Pharisees are the lawmakers. They are the experts in the Jewish Mosaic law and needed to say that they didn't like Jesus. So they came, like the first line said, it, uh, it, 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 the Pharisees came tempting him. So each time they met with Jesus, they came with difficult questions, they came with occasions that will make him make an error, and then they can hold him accountable, they can charge him for anything. This was one of those occasions. Let me remind you of one or two of them. Remember one time they came and said, is it good for us to pay tax? And he said, well, whose inscription is on this coin? He said, Caesar. Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what is God. One time they came, remember, they came one time with a woman 
And they said, we caught her right in the act. And they came armed with stones, ready to kill the woman. And they said, what say you? I don't know. Go ahead and stone her. But let the person who has no sin be the first to cast the stone. And he bent down to write. And before he lifted up his face, they had all gone. And he said, woman, where are your accusers? He said, they are gone. He said, well, if they couldn't condemn me, I'm not going to condemn you. Go and sin no more. So this was one of those occasions. Today, they came tempting him. Say, we're going to get him someday. We're coming to him now. We know the Lord of Moses. So let's ask him, is it okay for us to divorce our wife for every reason? If the wife snores in the night, divorce. If that, that was it. He said, for every, look at it, for every cause. If the wife coughs loudly, divorce. If the food is not, you know what I mean. <laughs> Praise God. So Jesus said, the response of Jesus was, is what we are going to be using today. He said, have you not read? Now, what they have not read is found in the book of Genesis chapter 2, verse uh, 18 to 25. We may not go there to read, but you can write it down. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18 to 25 is exactly what were the God's original plan is. In fact, let, let's go there. Let's go there. This green light is my time, right? I, 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 <laughs> Praise God. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm just. Okay, okay, because I don't like this. <laughs> I'm, I've been set free. <laughs> okay, but I'll be fine. Okay, so let's, let's go to um, Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. And the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he will call them. And whatever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found and help meet for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed off the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which he took, the Lord God took, had uh, taken from man, made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, this, now, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh, and she shall be called woman, because he was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, and the man and the woman, and were not ashamed. So Jesus said, have you not read? Isn't it the problem that most of us have not read, and yet we judge people? We don't know the details of things, but we judge these folks have not read what God intended for marriage from the beginning. So Jesus reminded them, we went back to see that this was actually what was at the beginning. At the beginning, God made them male and female, joined them together, became naked, not ashamed. He said, leave, cleave, become one, inseparable. What God had joined together. And then they came and said, Moses told them, Jesus said, Moses did that because of the hardness of your hearts. Today we're going to go to the, then the, th the three things I want us to speak of from what Jesus said, we have dealt with one, is have you not read? What haven't they read? What didn't they read? What was at the beginning? What was at the beginning? They didn't read Genesis chapter 2. Have they not read? And they didn't read. Most of us have made decisions on marriage based upon what we saw on television. You have not read. Most of us, it's what the parents, our parents did that we just follow step because we have not read. 
Today you have read. Amen. How many of you want to obey the word of the Lord? No, I want to see your hand. If you want to obey, okay, period. So and that's all. That's what I came to do. In the beginning, what was at the beginning? It's what they have not read. What haven't they read? The fact that God made them male and female, the fact that they came, became one flesh, the fact that if they are joined, they cannot be separated. That's what they have not read. I want you to be making informed decisions. Your decisions should be based upon analytical, empirical information. And today, with the short time we have, God's going to help us to answer seven questions. Seven questions. Are you ready? Anytime we finish answering the question, we go. Yeah, I like that. We have to answer the seven questions. By the time we finish answering the seven questions, every confusion that is left in you will be cleared in Jesus' name. And when you know, you know, disciples themselves also did not read what was at the beginning. That's why they said, if the state of a man is like this, it is not good for a man to marry. Now, how many of you know that I've already contradicted God? For God said, it was not good for a man to be alone. See, because they have not read, they say it is not good for a man to marry. It's good for a man to marry. Say amen. amen. You will marry. <laughs> so based upon this foundation, we're going to answer seven questions quickly. Seven questions. Number one, what therefore is marriage in God's economy? I'm not talking about marriage in the United States or according to your constitution. I'm not talking about marriage according to your tradition. I'm talking to the marriage at the beginning. The one that God established. What is defined as marriage? Number two, why did God bring about marriage? Number three, what are his guiding principles? What is his manual to keep this engine of marriage going? Number four, what are the worldly principles, the things the people of the world, people would think are unbelievers, what do they base their marriage upon? What do they think before, they, what do they use to select who their wife is going to be? Number five, which is very crucial, is what are the godly principles? How do you know the will of God? This will of God harassed me as a young man. What is the will of God? I like, I want to see my wife. I know how it looks like. That's, what's the will of God? Now we're going to see the will of God. And that will help the young men and young women here to make a decision today. Why are you scared? T today. Because once you have information, you make a decision. The reason why you're not making decisions is because you don't have the information. So the number five question is, how do I know who to marry? That was the question that bogged me down for a long time. I had sisters around me, singers and all that. Which one? They're all born again. Which one of them should I pick? There's an answer to that. Number six. Now that you have made a choice, a marriage, a home is set up. What are the responsibilities within the home? Number seven, how do you keep the engine of marriage going? Maybe people like Deepo should tell us. 30 years now. 30 years. Okay, now that you poked me, let me poke him a bit. But by the way, I was one of the, the best men at his wedding. And when they asked him, will thou have this woman to be your lovely da 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 da? He said, yes, most definitely. Do you remember? <laughs> And of course, when, I, when it came to my own, I quoted him as well. I said, most definitely. Praise God. Seven questions. Number one, what is marriage? In God's economy, from what we have read, marriage is the union of a man and one woman. Thank you, Ben. <laughs> In holy matrimony, publicly declared, physically and emotionally consummated, permanently sealed. Let me go over that again. Is the union, the divine union of one man, one woman, publicly declared, permanently sealed, consummated physically, emotionally, spiritually for the rest of their lives. If you have that definition, it means that it's not a man and a man. It's not a woman and a woman. It's not a man and a tree. It's not a woman and a dog. It's a man and a man in God's economy at the beginning. Yes. Amen. 
That's all. So I want to clear off your mind then. That's, that's, question number one is done, see? Done, that's it. There's no that, you know, people like Martin Luther King said, marriage is the best way of God expressing himself. And we're going to go to that later. You know, God loves this institution. Our salvation was predicated on marriage. Jesus came through the instrumentality of a home. When he's going to come back again, he's going to come as what? Our husband. As if we are the bride. He's going to come at the bridegroom. The first miracle Jesus performed was at the wedding ceremony. So marriage is number one in God's plan. And anyone who is not obeying, who is not going to it, is disobedient to God. Why? Because he said, it is not, no, complete for me. No, ready. It is not good for a man, a woman to be alone. Clear. Number two. So why did he establish marriage? Now, when Jesus was answering this question, he said, he said, for this cause. My brother, come, come. Yes, you are I don't know. I didn't know. Why did you come? Why did you come here? You asked me to come. Thank you. Clap for him. I can go back now. <laughs> His action was predicated upon my assessment. Okay, are you following the logic? I said, come, and he came. And I asked him, why did he come? Because I asked him to come. Now, listen now. Male and female created he them for this cause. So why did God establish marriage? You have to answer me, please. No, for this question, what do we want to answer? Okay, let me go back again. Let me go back again. Male and female created he them for this cause. You are too advanced. Just simple. <laughs> Male and female created him them for this cause. Shall a man that, that what is the cause? What is the reason? Marriage. No. <laughs> okay. 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 You are too advanced. I'm sure Pastor will put so many things in your mind. Sammy. Okay. Okay. That's why I started about my brother. Now listen to the statement again. Male and female. Created him because of this. So what is it because of? Thank you, thank you. Because male and female. The reason why God brought marriage is because he created them male and female. For this cause. Yes. <laughs> for this cause. For this reason. The fact that it's a male and a female. And they are different. Look, let no psychology, let no all these confused people confuse you that you are feeling like, like my body is a man, you are a woman. Physiologically, physically, everything, you are a man, a woman. There's no in good between. I want to hear a good amen. Yeah. Now, because you are a man and because there's a woman, that's where marriage comes in. Why? <laughs> Because a man is incomplete without the woman. Give a hand. So, so the reason for marriage is because a man will remain incomplete until he's married for this cause. There are so many things that are lacking. One, first of all, <laughs> for all those who are now married, there's, there's a hole on your side right now covered by the flesh. And any little accident, it will be punctured, you bleed to death. So it's better for you to cover it with a rib, just for information. <laughs> so you are incomplete as a man. You are incomplete as a woman because as a woman, you are like a branch cut off the tree. You look green. <laughs> it's only a matter of time you dry. I'm, tell I'm telling you, no matter how beautiful you are looking now, you can only be more beautiful when you are married. So for this cause, the reason for marriage is because we are created differently. And for us to function, to attain the God-given goal, it can only be obtained in marriage. All 
the things the man is lacking are found in the woman. And all the things the woman is lacking are found in the man for this cause. In the, in the beginning, have you not read? We just read it from the beginning for this cause. So for you to attain that goal in your life, marriage is key. Number two reason for marriage is for procreation. You know, God gave under commandment in Genesis chapter one. He said, go, increase, multiply. You remember that place? Increase, multiply, replenish. Who are the accountants here? Replenish? Okay, okay. Stock, uh, stock, well, stock, reorder level. Yeah, the guy has finished. finished. <laughs> reorder level, um, when it comes to level, you reorder, okay? Now, God said we should increase and multiply. For us to multiply, it had to come through procreation. So the only way God put that instrumentality in is through marriage. So that you can increase. Deeper was one. And in fact, if I should expose him again, he, <laughs> when he was about to marry, I'm to, <laughs> he said, Sam, I only want one child. <laughs> he was so, you boy, he was, everything was, you grew up in Germany and all that. I said, no. <laughs> so Nani was like, beg him for me. <laughs> now, I'm, I was one, but now I'm six. That is four plus my wife, six. That is God's arrangement. It can only come through marriage. Number three, you don't even know God until you're married. Everything we teach you in church can only be practiced in marriage. Patience, love, peace, respect, all these things you learn. <laughs> you're not reporting anybody, are you? <laughs> Everything we're preaching here is only performed in marriage. So marriage came so that you can begin to know God. Also, two are better than one, for they will have reward of their suffering. One, if one falls, the other one lifts him up. So marriage is important because two are better than one. In fact, one of the things I said about marriage is, it is the easiest place to form a quorum. The Bible says that where two of three, uh, where anything you agree together shall be done. It can't be done in a church like this. When you say, join your hands and pray, I hardly do that kind of stuff because it's not easy for all of you to be agreed on a prayer point. Even if you say, let everybody be rich. <laughs> Somebody will say, ah, rich, this is very carnal. That prayer is already defeated. <laughs> so I don't normally do all this, let your hand and pray. No, it's not working. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but when you and your wife agree, even between wife and husband, how difficult it is. The interpretation of things. But when you agree, man, you can move mountains. So for prayer to be answered, join hands in agreement. You find one shall pursue and two shall pursue. Praise God. So we've defined marriage. We would also say why God made marriage. Male and female created them for reprocreation, for knowledge of God and for the protection of society. Number three question. What are God's manual? What is his manual? You see, a manufacturer of this instrument will have a manual, even though black people don't read manuals. <laughs> but you have to learn how to read. I nearly destroyed one instrument I bought one time. I was just chucking, chucking, chucking. Then, Sam, there's a manual. There's a manual. Read it. God's Having brought this marriage about, had the following guidelines. Number one, it is not good. So number one, everybody must be married. Number two, it's a male and female. That's clear. <laughs> number three, it involves a living. You leave your father's house. You leave your mother. A woman also, you leave. Some women will leave and keep one box. No, leave and clear everything. No, that, I'm serious. Some people will leave and still have, I, I don't know, I'm sorry, but that's me. If you have this compound name that your husband's name is, uh, is Sam and your father's name is uh, Michael and you say uh, Regina Michael Sam. No, I don't. You have not left. No, I didn't say you to. 
I didn't, I didn't say it. <laughs> please, please. <I'm> just <laughs> no, I didn't say it. No. So God's principle number one is not good for a man to be. It's not good. Number two, it involves a living. You live. This time my mother used to do it. This time my father. No, 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 no. It's a new home now. Live. Cleave. Cleave. So people can live. You carry your boxes and you come to the same house and you're still not cleaving. You're still holding your culture. You are Igbo, you are Yoruba, you are this, you are... No, 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 no. One. Let me drop this straight away. In God's economy, it's not about hierarchy. It's not about equality. It's oneness. Nobody is more higher, higher than the other. Oneness. So God brings us we should become one. Lastly, naked, not ashamed. Naked there means there's nothing about this man that the wife should not know. And there's nothing about this woman that the man should not know. During the courtship, I call it the first naked, not ashamed, not physically nakedness in this first one when you are doing courtship. But in marriage, it's physical nakedness and psychological, emotional nakedness. Whatever your husband, if your mom calls you and... Okay, let me use myself. My mother-in-law called one day. I want to speak to my daughter. I said, that was even strange. Your daughter or my wife? I said, okay, what do you want to tell her? I said, no, 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 no. I want to talk to her. I said, no, no, forget about it. Whatever I cannot hear, she cannot hear. I took charge immediately. Yeah. So don't create this gap. So oneness. You must be one. The whole part, the man must sleep. Let God finish his assignment on you before you get married. Don't be in a hurry. Sleep. It's between a male and female. It's cleaving and it's permanently sealed. Once something becomes one, like if you can imagine that I have orange juice here in one glass. Can you imagine a glass in my hand? Can you ever see the glass in my hand? Yeah, orange juice. You know the color of orange juice? Okay, maybe it's half full. Let it be half full. On this other hand, I have apple juice. You know the color of apple juice? Now, in the middle is, is a glass that is empty. If I pour the two in, will you distinguish, will you see apple or orange? No. They are lost in this dissolve, in this oneness. That's why when you, the way I look at relationship is when I see them resembling themselves, you know that this is working. Are you married? The two of you. You see, you see if you look at these people, you, you think that, no, no, no. No, it's true. It's not, it's not, it's true. <laughs> Praise God. Deeper and one will look like each other now. <laughs> Praise God. Question number three has been answered. God brought it about. Yeah, he has his own principle. Follow the principle. If you have a Mercedes, there's a manual for Mercedes. You don't use Toyota Mercedes, Toyota manual to handle Mercedes. Number four question, quickly, quickly, quickly. What do the people of the world, what do they use to make selection of their wives? I'll just run over that quickly. Number one, I call it the best wine first. Remember when Jesus went to that first marriage and he turned water into wine and the governor of the wedding said, who did this? In this culture, we normally will drink the best wine first before we get drunk. And when we are drunk, the bad wine comes. Now, this principle is this. Unbelievers go into relationship with their best of behavior. They keep all their wickedness, all their... <laughs> and it can be forever. Even if your, your courtship is 10 years, they will keep it. And if you are drunk by that goodness, you see a brother, a sister comes to the car, bang the door, the glass shatters. No, no problem, no problem. Glasses are meant to be broken. I mean, what is that? What are you? Are you, are you hot? Anything wrong with you? No, no, okay, it's fine. You have a lunch date for one o'clock. He comes three o'clock. Are you? Okay? Everything's okay. Are you fine? No, no, I'm okay. No, no. <laughs> Sunday morning for church, and one is not ready, shouting. This same guy who could tolerate you for coming late 30 minutes, one hour, is no more tolerant. He has served you with the best wine. You get drunk, you fall in love. What you get is what you get. 
That's what they use. They come with deception. Number two, comparative advantage. Now, comparative advantage in international trade, I uh, have countries have some qualities, some other, they, they lack some things. So for them to trade together, they exchange. Now, this works this way. You see, a poor man, a poor boy from a poor background will always be eyeing to marry from a rich family so that he can also belong to the Joneses. So his intention is just to rise in the society, not because he loves you, but you want to leverage on your position. I call it comparative advantage. Or some thin brothers going to marry fat sisters. I mean, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, 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 <laughs> no, 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 well, I mean, well, you know what I mean. No, there's no, 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 okay, okay, okay. A well-built sister. <laughs> Oh, 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 okay, you know what I mean. You know it, you know it. <laughs> Marriage that is built on that will not last. And that one, beauty. I don't know what beauty is. is. If you are married because somebody is looking elegant, especially sisters, when they are, they are single, they are very elegant. The only reason they are elegant is because they have not started eating well. <laughs> Their mind is not settled yet. When their mind is settled, they begin to expand. So it, it, it will not work. Okay. <laughs> Somebody has been blessed today. Yes. Heaven help those who help themselves. This is a very ungodly principle. You know, they, they, they go ahead to do it by themselves. In God's economy, it's not so. Lastly on this one. Seeing is believing. Now, this is opposite of our faith. Hebrew 11, faith is. You see, in faith, we don't see, we believe. These are the kind of people that will get a woman pregnant before they marry. And it's wrong because that pregnancy you are seeing now, before marriage or after marriage can go. And the woman may never take in again. So it's deceptive. So what, there are all kinds of worldly principles they use. But we are Christians. Amen. Amen. Lastly, they see marriage as a social contract. You know, my partner. My partner. They, they, no, we're not partners. We are one. Question number four, done. We have answered what is marriage. Why did God bring it about? What are these guidelines? We have seen how the worldly people make their choice. Number five is the key one I actually wanted to run through. Because this is where... The problem is, how in the world do I know who to marry? That was my greatest question for a long time. Marriage was my nightmare. I was scared. But once I got the understanding, it was easy for me. So for young men and young women who have not married now, this is how you know your wife. Everybody want to know how you know your wife or husband? Let's say hallelujah. Let the boys say hallelujah. Amen. And let the girls say Amen. Yeah, amen, amen. How today you are going to know who your wife is going to be. And I'm a stock trader, I, I, I'm a capital market expert. And when we analyze investment, we use certain criteria to screen investment opportunities. And like America has over 10,000 investment trading instruments. If I put one criterion in, 5,000 will go. If I put another one in, 4,000 will go until I get maybe 40 or 30 stocks I can trade. In the same way, any of this criterion we are going to use will clear most sisters away from your life. Will clear the brothers that are serious around from your life. Are you ready to receive them? Yes. Number one, the word of God, the Bible. Straight away, how, I mean, how difficult is that? The Bible said, don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Difficult. How difficult is that? The Bible said that it's a man and a woman. The Bible said, it's, you know, whatever the Bible is saying, obey it. Does the other person believe in the Bible? If he doesn't, the relationship is not even starting. Number two, is he born again? Has he given his life to Christ? Has he repented? What did he repent from? When did he repent? Has his life changed from what he used to be? What is his testimony? What is his testimony? Most people come to church, they clap hands, they sing new songs. They have no testimony. Testimony is to know when you gave your life 
to God. Praise God. You can get also through the love test. The, it's in the Bible. Love is patient. Love does not insist on its own. Love endured forever. The definition of love is not what you know from your films and videos. It's not sex. Love is spiritual. It's deeper. It's, 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 it's selfless. You don't insist on your own. Love prefers the other one above themselves. To go and read about love, the definition of love is in the Bible. If anyone does not qualify, it does, doesn't pass the love test, that person cannot be your wife. And that way you can know about your wife is dreams and visions. And I say this with caution. Even if you dream that this is what your woman is and it's not born again, you know that dream is already wrong. Okay, so let me put that way. Yeah, you saw in your dream, you're holding hands together and you're marrying, but it's not born again. That dream is telling you it's not the wife. <laughs> Vision, the same thing. Also, recommendations of friends. Some of you are here, maybe your wives are in London, your wives are in Chicago, and people can bring you two together. But in doing that, you pass through the test. Is he born again? Does he have the word of God? You know, so any one of them, if you pass them through the instrumentality of the screening criterion, you'll be fine. Praise God. Oh, they're light going down. Praise God. To so dreams and visions. Securing agreement, you must be agreed. Look, if the parents are not agreed, please stay. Maybe that God says, not the wife, you know, the husband. If the sister has not agreed, marriage is not taking place. So agreement is that we have agreed that we are going to marry, right? Then we'll go to the parents. The parents must also agree. Don't be spiritual about anything. If their parents, if they don't agree and you marry, they have, they have a string attached. You need to get blessing of your parents in law to be. If that woman is your wife, the, the, the parents will agree. I can give you my testimony. For a year, they didn't, I'll come to them. When they know I'm in town, they lock the gate. Yeah. But I knew you were the one. So I, try, I went through that. For a year or two, they didn't. And my problem was that I have other parents who wanted me to be their son-in-law. So, agreement. Does that make sense? If you use any of these criteria, use this thing now. Is he born again? Does he believe in the Bible? Is there love? Have you passed the love test? Is there an agreement? You know, put this thing together and God will help you to make a choice today in the name of Jesus. As I begin to round up, number six question is, what are the responsibilities? You see, each of these will help us to build a husband. Let's start from the husband. The Bible said, husbands love your wives, as Christ loved the church. How did Jesus love the church? Humble himself, died for the church. Are you ready to die for your wife? Physically die for her. I mean, I can't imagine anything coming my wife's way. And if I block it, I die and survive. That is, I won't even think about it. I'll, I'll do it. And I, No, 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 and I'll do it. There's no, there's no question. No, there's no question. And I'm not even saying it for you to, that is a fact. She is protected from every member of my household. You can't even, it's not even possible. No, it's, 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 it's not even happening. Some of you are exposing your wives to your family members. It shouldn't be so. Protect, protection is part of your life. So love her. Number two, you are the head. Husband, wave your hand. You are the head. Say, I'm the head. Okay. <laughs> head. <laughs> Headship comes with a responsibility. At the head, okay. <laughs> okay, let me make this statement. Anything that is wrong in your household right now is your fault. I'm not even smiling saying this. Anything wrong in your household now is your fault. If your house is unkept, it's your fault. If dinner is late, it's your fault. If your children are not doing well, is your fault. Why? Because you are the head. No, that, that is, no, that is, that is, no, that is a fact. My wife, no, no, no. We'll go to the wife. Your wife only came to help you. 
No, that's a fact. Dinner, who is responsible for dinner? You. Yes. No. No, no. No, no, no. You didn't marry a cook. No. Why is mine like this? <laughs> no. <laughs> and, and let me tell you, whatever I'm teaching you, I do it. No. I load the dishwasher. I cook. Even though my cooking is not the best, but she loves the food anyway. Some of you, you cross your leg. You, maybe you didn't go to work or something. She comes back from work. He changes. You are sitting down reading this world, watching football or, or watching NPL. He cooks the food. The food is ready. You go up. You eat the food. He packs the plate. Look at your faces. <laughs> then in the night, you go. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. What is, it? What, is it? what is this? Help her. Anyway, at the head. Okay, let's, take it. let's break it down. The thinking faculty is in the head. So decisions are made by you. During COVID, somehow I let one of my children to travel to, 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 to China. I was not at home, but I got the permission. It was the dumbest thing I've ever done. And he brought COVID from that place. And everybody in the house caught COVID. My prayer for repentance is, God, if these people died, but if I had said no, he won't have gone. And even if he went, I would have been freed. Decisions. Some of you want to please your children. So them growing up, they are not my friends. They are my children. Now they are becoming friends. Tough decisions. On, by God's principle. That's why I said anything wrong in your house right now is your fault. You must see afar. The eyes are the vision. If you let in a stranger into your house, and let me say this clearly, your mother-in-law, your son, your friends, and because we are ashamed, God telling you, don't let that person in. But you are shy of your wife. What would they say? And they come in and they pollute your house. It's your fault. Take that wrong decision. She's not coming to the house. Because you are, the things you see, the thing God has made you to see, nobody else can see. You speak for the family. You lead the family in the fear of the Lord. So I want to emphasize this headship. That anything wrong in your house right now, it's not a witch from anywhere. No. It's you who couldn't pray. It's you who are sleeping and snoring and getting evil to enter your house. You are the pastor of the house. Your husband, your wife is not at fault. If you are late coming to church, it's not because she's late. No. Why don't you get her shoe ready for her? Why don't you tell her that the time we are going is, is if the thing is three hours now, I will tell her is <laughs> get ready. Help her to get ready. Men are not happy with me. I'm your man. <laughs> you have to discover your wife. Your wife is a gift. It's a gift. And when it comes, number one, receive her. When you get a package, what do you do? You open. You bring it out. That's how relationship is. And some of us are calling our wives, honey, like, nah, all this mundane thing. You must know your wife by revelation. When Adam saw Eve, what did he say? This is now bone of my bone, flesh of my, he shall be called, what do you call your wife? Oh, right, that, that's good. Maybe if you put it in your language, it will be one word. Yeah, that, that's good. What do you call your wife? <laughs> I missed that. I missed what did you say? <laughs> okay. You must, all this honey, love, all these, these are funny, funny things. You must, and if you have not found a name for her yet, go and pray tonight. Who is this woman? Adam saw a completeness. You must discover your wife tonight. Even if you have been 40 years, that's why it's going to be renewal. 
drop this Mama James and. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> you must live and cleave. You must live and cleave. You must dwell with her in knowledge. Dwell with her in knowledge. And lastly, on this one, you must nourish her. The day I normally play my wedding uh, tape over on most anniversaries, four, five, ten years, Dylan, I read, I heard one that I was saying it, and I said, Is that what I said? You will hold her, you will hold her, you will nourish her, you will do this. I said, eh? I've not, I've not been doing this one. No. <laughs> nourish her means you nourish her. Some of you cannot even rub the back of your wife. You cannot put the earring together. You cannot zip. What is this? Look at your faces. <laughs> <laughs> nourish her. Honor her. Honor her with, with, with a title in your home. Your, your, something in your your building or, or, or something, honor her with something. Okay, dwell with her. With, then lastly, naked, not ashamed. There's no information. There's nothing I'm going to tell my wife that she doesn't know. Nothing. There's, there's nothing. There's nothing you're going to tell me that I don't know. Wives, okay, are you ready for your own? <laughs> Let's Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> okay, the, the service is ended. <laughs> okay, okay. No, 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 to be fair, to be fair. Look, okay, no, number one, you are priceless. No, no, there's no. Look, there's no price. Know yourself that you are priceless. Your value cannot be estimated. Number two, you are a help meet. I don't know why I'm looking at you like that. You didn't come to overtake that man. Even if you are the one who is bringing the money in the house, you are a help meet. I know it doesn't go quiet here. No matter how anointed you are, she doesn't know the Bible, but you are not his pastor. He owned that house. You only came to help. Don't overtake him. Lift him up. <laughs> you are help me. Don't overtake him. Don't struggle for it's for equality. It's not about equality, it's oneness. Amen. Perform your duty as a wife. The Bible says, submit. So when I said the man is responsible, have you submitted? He gives an advice. You, you say, who are you to advise me? He may be more educated, may have a PhD. No, in, in God's economy, that, those ones don't know work. Submit. He may be making mistakes. You still correct him and give him that your advice for him to give it back to you. No, you're not, you're not getting it. And, and you can do it easily. You know, men were very easy to manipulate. <laughs> Just make that decision his own. Just give it to him to give it to you. <laughs> Obey him in the Lord. Just obey him. As your mother, Sarah, obeyed. And call him Lord. Don't, on that, look, let me tell you. The Bible says, let me, <laughs> your salvation is in your husband. In bed of children shall women be saved. It's in the Bible. Though. So this one, you're singing hallelujah and singing, your salvation is in your husband. You are in him. So you need to get his consent, get everything. Help him. Be indispensable to him. Make yourself indispensable. Very uncomfortable, like some of that I know now. It's very uncomfortable. Because the wife is not here. It can, it's incomplete. <laughs> <laughs> I can see his helplessness. <laughs> 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 
Make yourself indispensable. And your model is in Proverbs chapter 31, verse 1 to the end. You are a virtuous woman. You are a hardworking woman. You are an investor. Your, your children are proud of you because of you. Your husband shall be known at the gate because of you. This is the husband of Angelina. Whose name are we hearing? That's all. If you write that book, whose name is on that book? Angelina who? <laughs> How many of you have heard of Brother Ladipot, Ladi, um, Labidot? See, I, I said I'm going to test this church. Have you ever heard of Brother Ladipot, uh, Ladi, uh, Lapidot? Really? One, one young girl had known. You see, that the, the man's name only came once in the Bible, and it was because of his wife. Okay, how many of you have heard of Deborah? Okay. Her husband is Labidot. So when they were introducing Deborah, he said, Deborah, a judge, a prophetess, a, a, a warrior, the wife of Labidot. Her qualification, her promotion is in Labidot. So no matter how endowed you are, you get your husband to be known at the gate. Lastly, how do you keep the engine running? I just wrote you, how do you keep the engine running? Just be a Christian, that's all. Just be a Christian. Patience, love, tolerance, forgiveness. They are all the things we teach. Just be a Christian. Love one another. Believe and trust one another. Respect one another. Live by faith. She will change, you will change. Things will change for the better in Jesus' name. Have sexual faithfulness. Don't begin to fast when you have not told the other person that you are fasting. I don't understand that one. If you are fasting and you have not told, <laughs> that fasting has to go. Yes. Why are you looking at me like this? <laughs> the Bible said it. If you are going to fast, agree that you are going to fast. And it will not be too long. Not 50 days, not 15 days. <laughs> Sexual faithfulness, humility, Christian principle, patience, forgiveness, communication, sacrifice, all are the attributes of Christians that can make us one. So brethren, marriage is God's idea. And we can only be fulfilled as human beings when we go into it. And when we go into it with understanding, I'm going to be praying for three sets of people today. Number one, if you, have not, if you are not a Christian, if you are not a Christian, do you know this song? Daily as I live, hello sister, often as I breathe, let my whole life, oh, okay, 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 oh, great, great, okay. So I want to pray for anyone who's not born again in this church. Anyone, where are the musicians? Please come. Anyone who's not born again in this church? Let's close our eyes. I want to pray for everyone, anyone who is not born again. Father, thank you for all that will give their life to Christ today. You will receive them in Jesus' name. I'm going to be praying for all our unmarried people in the house. Is it okay for you to rise? Anyone who's not married, can you rise? Or if you are shy, if you are shy, you can see it, but I don't think why you should be shy. It's a good thing to marry. Okay, so everyone who's not married, you're going to marry, all of you, and I'll come for your wedding. No, no, I'm going, to, I'm going to come for your wedding. I made a promise in New York one time, and the sister fixed her wedding in Christmas. <laughs> and I had to carry everybody to, to New York for Christmas. But I will come. Amen. Sorry? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Oh, these are people that are not married in this church. Oh, great. This is a great church. You can turn in the gap for anybody. And I want you to pray. Say, Father, I accept your proposal. I accept that it's not good for me to be alone. I've accepted what you said I should do. I will accept who you are going to bring my way in the name of Jesus. Father, these are your children. 
they will not make mistakes. They will make informed decisions. They will be obedient to your word and they will have a successful marriage in the name of Jesus. By this time next year, oh God, even before I leave, let them begin to make decisions. Let them begin to be, to found who it is they are marrying in the name of Jesus. I close, destroy every fear, every confusion, every curse in the life of everyone here that is being held down not to marry. I break that curse right now in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we are prayed. I want to pray for families. Everybody married here, right up. Anybody who married, I'm, have a home. I want to bless the home today. Your home is blooming. Your home is one kind, but God's going to anoint. The new wine is flowing again in your home in the name of Jesus. I prophesy to every home represented here today. Some are discouraged. Some are regretting. Some are in pain. But today I bring the balm of Gilead to heal every home in the name of Jesus. Restore every fallen, every broken relationship tonight in the name of Jesus. And let the wine flow again in the name of Jesus. In the city. For those who think they don't want to marry, we, have, we are divorced. We may not stand up. We are divorced. We have a broken relationship. I'm going to pray for repairs. Father, for all that are so discouraged here today, heal them and restore them in the name of Jesus. Shall we rise? They May as precious of your, your love daily as I live, often as I breathe, often as I breathe, let my whole life, let my whole life be as precious of your daily as I live, daily as I live, often as I breathe. Let my whole, Let my whole, whole life, life be expressions of your grace. Daily as I live, daily as I live, often as I breathe. Let my whole life be expressions of your Father, have a father, hallelujah.